In this video, we'll go over the basics of formatting. Bear in mind that your help file is not a brochure. As the name suggests, the primary goal of your help file is to help your users and not to attract their attention with colorful fonts and images as brochures do to lure their customers into buying products. So the most important rule when it comes to formatting is to keep it simple. Before you begin work, make sure you get client approval for font, font size, color, line spacing, etc. Number two, maintain consistency of style. Do not change the font, font style or line spacing randomly in the help file. Now let us say your client wanted images to have a title in italics. Also, the title is to be placed at the bottom margin of the images and centered. Now this rule has to be implicitly obeyed throughout the document wherever images are inserted. Therefore, entering a title at the top margin of an image or making the title left aligned or right aligned at the bottom of the image are all disallowed. Now let's take a closer look at the formatting I have done to the text that we created earlier. I must say at this moment that I have followed this style of formatting for innumerable help files. You could follow the same too. I have used the default font setting of Arial and a font size of 10. If you wish to change the font or the size, here is where you do it using the font name and the font size drop down list boxes. For short sentences, to proceed to subsequent lines, that is to move to the next line, I have used the carriage return or the enter key on the keyboard at the end of the sentence. For longer sentences, if your lines exceed the right border, the sentence will automatically wrap to the next line. To create a line of space, use the carriage return or the enter key. You can view paragraph and text marks that represent carriage returns by toggling the show paragraph and text marks button here. Notice how I have made the titles to sign in and to sign out in bold lettering. To do this, select the text and click Ctrl B or click the bold button from the ribbon. To make text appear in italics, select the text and press Ctrl I or click the italics button. To underline text, select the text and press Ctrl U or click the underline button. Similarly, the names of the boxes, email or phone box, password, buttons such as sign in, sign out, and the pronouns, that is the name of products such as Firefox, Opera, MS Outlook have also been made bold. Next, I have made the note stand out by giving it a red color and I have made it bold too. To make text red, select the text and click the apply color to text drop down list and from the palette, choose the red color from the list of standard colors. To apply a background color as in highlighting text, select text and choose a color from the apply color to text background drop down list. In the note, I have left the link as it is because help and manual automatically creates a default formatting for links. Now, let me explain an important aspect of documentation called white space. Notice how there is adequate spacing in between instruction lines and the sections to sign in and to sign out. Instead of cramping lines together, notice how by just providing a single line of space in between instruction statements and by providing two lines of space before the to sign out section, I have added more clarity to the content, also called breathing space. These spaces make the document easy on the eye for the user. Don't misuse this technique by creating too much of white space, just the adequate amount will do. Next, for the numbering of steps, I have inserted numbers manually and haven't used any auto numbering as in numbered lists. To left align the instruction steps after every single number and the period that follows the number, I have included two spaces before beginning the instruction statement. And I have inserted a single space after the period for double digits. This ensures that my left alignment of the instruction statements will start from the same left position for all lines. However, the better option would be to use auto numbering, which I'll explain in the next video, as numbering statements manually, as explained here, has some disadvantages. I have just explained a simple yet effective technique to format your content. In fact, you could use this as a template for all your projects too. However, if your client wants a different font, size and spacing, go ahead with those choices. Help and Manual has a very powerful and feature rich editor. The sky is the limit when it comes to customizing your content. But do bear in mind the rules I had mentioned earlier about keeping the formatting simple and least distracting. In our next video, we'll look into why numbered lists are the better option when it comes to numbering your instruction steps.